Hey guys, Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out Ubuntu Budgie 21.04 on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's get started. To be honest, these couple of weeks, it has been a little bit tricky for me. I've been really busy with bigger projects and a lot of personal stuff. So I haven't had a chance to really film a lot of content for this channel. I might be even delayed on a couple of videos coming forward just because I've been a little bit behind on everything else. Nevertheless, I will try to come out with as much content as I can. I also recorded about like three videos for my other channel that I haven't even been able to edit yet but we'll get to that when we get to that. As far as this operating system goes, I've been meaning to check this out for quite some time, actually for the past two or three months since it's been released. This is an official build of Ubuntu Budgie for the Raspberry Pi. And what's special about this is that not only Ubuntu Budgie is a pretty decent desktop, they actually officially included some tools that will work with Raspberry Pi. And that's what I'm more interested in checking out. So here we have the desktop and it's got a really nice layout. You can actually, I've actually seen someone theme this to look like Windows 11 and it's gotten to that point. But yeah, right now this is stock install. The only thing I did was quick updates and that's about it. Now, one thing you might notice, I don't know if my capture card will record this, but you see this line? This is actually a bug, I think, in the 21.04 Ubuntu installations because I get this also on their regular desktop and then now Budgie has it as well. So. It's kind of weird and I don't like it because it bothers me a little bit, that little one pixel line right on the left side. Uh, but otherwise, it does work. Now, uh, this is a default installation of Budgie. If you guys ever used it, it actually is a pretty good desktop. But to be honest, for Raspberry Pi standards, it's a little bit heavy. If I was to go over to System Monitor, and this is a fresh boot, so... If I go over to resources, it already takes up 1.2 gigs of RAM. Now you could see that it does do a lot of other stuff. Like it's got some transparency up on top. It uses GNOME as default. So overall, it is a little bit heavy on the resource side on first boot. Now for the Raspberry Pi 4, it actually runs pretty decent. I'm currently running it on my CM4, um, the com Compute Module 4. And technically right now, this is the only board that I have free that I could test Raspberry Pi stuff on. That's why I installed it on here. But it does run pretty good, especially running on eMMC. Uh, running YouTube videos as well does run. Uh, it does take a little bit long to load. Like I said, it is a little bit resource heavy. I would recommend doing my little trick of minimal, minimum clock of one gigahertz and overclocking this to two. Then you'll feel, it will feel a lot much better. But for now, let's go to Nova Spirit. But for now, it does feel sluggish because I do have it on the stock clock. Here we go. And let's see, it's still loading right now. It takes a couple of seconds. Let's see. From Nova Spirit Tech and that works pretty well. Fast forward a little bit. And you can buy a pack of these, uh, four of them for like $8. Let me see. And what it's gonna do is one is actually gonna power- If I full screen, with continuous 12 it's so this low pixel right now. It's not on the high quality. Here. Let's uh, put some stats for nerds. Do I have, have some frame drops? Definitely 335, no, 75. It is dropping a lot. We'll actually be able to power the actual screen in case I need a should be on 1080, but it's not. Because I could tell it's not running on 1080. Now running on 1080 full screen, this is gonna have a lot of drop screens, especially running on Firefox. It doesn't have the H.264 um plug it it seems okay it doesn't run that well with full screen youtube videos and you can see that line what it really does that one pixel that it takes from the other side of the screen it's it just bothers me on this thing okay so running youtube videos is not so great but i was meaning to check something else out let me close this out and show you what i wanted to check on this originally which is whoa you see that it's like pinned to the top, just trying to run YouTube. It was pinned to the top. I shouldn't have closed it. Uh, let's pop over to this and scroll over to Budgie Arm. So this little utility that officially comes with Ubuntu Budgie allows you to tweak the Raspberry Pi settings. Now there's three different settings over here, standard, compact, and mini. Now this doesn't mean that the desktop will be smaller. It just means the visuals will be different because it's for different resolutions. So if you go over to mini, it's for vertical resolutions of less than 768. 
This one is at least of 768 and the standard is anything above 900. Uh, overclock, I could just choose to overclock if I want to. So if I want to go over to 1.8 or 2 gigahertz, I could just set the clock speed and it will actually modify the config.txt for me. Uh, for remote, I could actually enable VNC sharing, XRDP. If I click on this, this will actually install the XRDP for me, SSH access, and find my Pi server. Find my Pi server is actually allows you so you could locate different Pi's and stuff like that and uses Nmap. It's a really cool thing. And then auto login, disable lock. Now, if you are going to use VNC sharing, you do need to be able to be logged in before you, VNC will start. So this option is almost needed if you're planning to run everything headless. So auto login, disable lock screen, and enable VNC sharing. That will work as a good combo. And then you head over to display. Now you could actually set up to KMS mode, which is standard, full KMS, or the legacy mode, which is using a completely different driver that we don't actually use anymore for the more modern Pis like Raspberry Pi 3 and up. And you could set your memory over here. So if you need more graphic memory, technically, if I was to put a little bit more graphic memory in here, it might run a little bit better. So let me see if I update memory. I'm not going to reboot the Pi now, but I think it might run a little bit better for graphic processing if I had a little bit more memory because this desktop is extremely heavy and it could probably benefit from having uh, more memory in the graphics. Um, you could do a lot of settings here. Uh, Budgie actually, let me see if I could pull it up. Budgie desktop settings or welcome. If you go over to welcome or maybe desktop settings, let me double check. Um, it will give you a lot of options that you could change the full appearance of your look. Okay, definitely the welcome screen does help. I could just go to themes and layout, which is pretty much the same as desktop settings. So here you can actually change the appearance of how everything looks just through one click. So this is standard display that you would get from uh, Ubuntu Budgie. But if you are more familiar with like a window style, uh, let me see, they don't even have it here. They sh usually do. Uh, material design, let me see, material design. Uh, yeah, this is very similar to Windows because the list of programs is like that. It still has the dock menu, but I was actually changing, let me, let me close this out and pop over to Budgie desktop settings. No, okay, it is. it was over there. Budgie layout and themes. And yes, in here, uh, desktop layout, not switch appearance. So desktop layout, this is where you would go Redmond, which is like Windows 10 or traditional Budgie. This is the original Budgie, how they had it uh, with the bottom left screen. But if I'm more interested in a Windows style because I'm more familiar with it, like say if you're more familiar with Windows style and you want to stick with that style, you could just go to this theme layout where is it? That clicks it. I gotta apply this theme. So apply layout. If you're like Mac style, they actually have like a Mac style as well down here. But now I have the regular window style theme. You got my programs on the left. I could search on the bottom and then some quick access or the full programs on the right hand side. Uh, if I want to change the actual appearance, if I want it to be a light theme, maybe arc. Let's do apply makeover on the arc because I like it. So let me do the arc apply makeover and it'll change everything over, including the buttons, start menu, and everything else. Let me go to maybe this one. Is this the one? Oh, see, if I hit install, it'll actually install third party stuff. Let's go over to this one. This one is like a dark theme. This one seems like what it was before. I really can't tell anymore. They look almost the same. But yeah, quick appearance settings if you want to. They don't have any extra themes here. If you want to do extra themes, you have to manually download it and install it yourself. But they do have a good amount of set themes that you could start off with. Now, as far as settings go, this is very similar to any Ubuntu setup. You Same setup layout, uh, does, not much has changed. If you want to change background or change anything else over here, that's the same as any other Ubuntu layout. I just wanted to check out the about box over here to show if it would, yep, my graphics is running the V3D, memory is 3.7, Ubuntu 21.04, it is running 64-bit, and it is running X11 system. Oh, you know what? I wish that it was actually Wayland because that is available now. wonder how well that would run because Wayland would give you fractional scaling. And if you've got bigger monitors like 4K, fractional scaling does help. That's basically about it, what I want to go through. It's a quick themes change. 
if you ever decide to use it i would go check it out it does run a little bit slow on video processing on the firefox as you could see earlier but it does have that really cool um, menu for raspberry pi configurations now so the budget arm and pi that was just really the thing that i wanted to check out because they were talking about it when they were doing this which is the configuration on the pi anyway uh, that is it. If you guys are interested in checking it out, I will leave a link down in the description below to where you could get Ubuntu Budgie. If you have any questions about this, I'll try to answer them. Leave it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.